In this video I'm going to take a qualitative look at buffer solutions. So we're going to look at what buffer solutions are, we're going to look at how you make them and we're going to look at how they work. So we'll start with what they are, so there's the definition at the top of the board there. Buffer solutions maintain pH when small amounts of acid or alkali are added. Now obviously if you added a bucket full of acid or alkali, the buffer solution wouldn't be able to cope with that. So buffers only can work if small amounts of acid or alkali are added. There are two types of buffers. We can have acidic buffers, so they would maintain the pH less than 7, and basic buffers maintain a pH above 7. How you make them kind of follows the same pattern so if you're making an acidic buffer, you need a weak acid and its salt. And obviously the salt of a weak acid is its conjugate base. If you're making a basic buffer, you need the opposite to that. So you need a weak base and its salt. And the salt of a weak base is actually its conjugate acid. So we'll look at acidic buffers in some more detail now. We've just said to make an acidic buffer you need a weak acid and the salt of a weak acid. So there's a weak acid, ethanoic acid, and there's a salt of ethanoic acid, sodium ethanoate. So if we had solutions of both of these and put them in the same beaker, we would have a buffer solution. We'll explain what's going on now in the beaker. So we'll deal with the ethanoic acid first. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid and it hardly dissociates. So I'm going to use the size of my writing to, to um, get across the relative amounts we've got. So we'd have a large amount or reservoir of the acid. So I'm writing this really big, CH3COOH, weak acid partially dissociates, and I'm going to write in tiny writing, CH3, COO minus, and H plus. The salt, now the salt will completely dissociate because it's an ionic salt and they completely dissolve in water, so we would we'd actually have, we wouldn't have any um, of the sodium ethanoate left because it would completely dissociate. So we'd have a large amount of CH3COO minus ions and we'd have some Na plus ions as well. Now I don't like the fact there's no salt there so I'll just put that in yellow CH3COO Na. So the essential ingredients, if you like, in the buffer are the weak acid, the ion, the ethanoic ion, in the case of ethanoic acid, from the salt, and this H plus ion here. So it's really important to remember that, yes, we've got two sources of this ion here, we're only going to consider the ions from the salt. So essentially our buffer solution contains the ethanoic acid and that is in equilibrium with the ion from the salt and we're going to include that H plus ion there. So this is obviously um, from the acid and the important thing to remember is this is from the salt. The reason why we make this approximation is because in relative terms this is absolutely minute. These moles are absolutely tiny compared to those moles there so we, we basically ignore those. The sodium ions we don't really include because they're not going to, um, they don't perform any function um, in the buffer. 
So these are the important components. Before I explain how the buffer works, I just want to show you another way you can make an acidic buffer. So if you have a look at what's on the board there, it's saying you can also partially neutralise that weak acid. So we'll just quickly go through this. So we've got the weak acid and we've got some sodium hydroxide, which will obviously neutralise the acid. There's the reaction that takes place. So we'll make sodium ethanoid and water. Now suppose you had 0.5 moles of acid and 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide. So initially, before the reaction takes place, you wouldn't have any of that or any of that. Now, when the reaction's finished, you would have, well, there's only 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide. So this hasn't got enough to react, for it all to react. So you'd end up with 0.25 moles of that. All of that would react, so you wouldn't have any sodium hydroxide. And how much of the salt would you make? Well, it's going to be limited by this chemical here, these moles. So you'd have 0.25 moles of the salt. And obviously you're going to make 0.25 moles of water as well. So you can see that we have the ingredients for a buffer. We've got the weak acid and we've also got the salt. So by partially neutralizing the weak acid, you can also create a buffer solution. And then obviously, if you imagine the, the contents of that beaker would look, well, what would be in there? You'd have the CH3COOH, which is obviously going to be partially dissociating into its ions. And you've also got the salt there. You've got 0.25 moles of the salt, which will completely dissociate into its ions um, CH3COO- and Na+. And obviously you, there wouldn't be any of that once it's dissociated. So you can see, it'd be an H+, plus there as well, wouldn't it? So you can see you've got the essential ingredients for the buffer solution. So you'd have that large reservoir of acid, weak acid, and you'd also have a large source of the um, salt ion, and you'd also have that little amount of H plus there. Now for the purpose of the video I'm going to concentrate on the acidic buffers, but just to show you, you can make a basic buffer in pretty much the same way. So an example would be the weak base would be ammonia solution and the salt could be something like ammonium chloride and you could also partially neutralize the ammonia solution. So in the same way as we did with the acidic buffer you can make basic buffers as well. So we'll look at how buffers work now. So there's that e equilibrium again on the board showing the relative um, proportions of each of the essential components. So we've got a large supply of the weak acid because it's hardly dissociated. We've got a large supply of the um, salt ion because that's fully dissociated and we have this tiny amount of H plus ions and that's from the dissociation of the weak acid. Now basically all we're going to do is apply Le Chatelier's principle to explain how buffers work. If you think about adding acid, what are you actually adding? You're adding H plus ions. So you're going to increase the concentration of the H plus ions. So how will the equilibrium respond? Well, we've got a nice a large supply of this um, salt ion, which is the conjugate base. So any extra H plus ions that you introduce, well, they will react with this reservoir of um, salt ion and obviously the equilibrium will shift to the left. We'll look at the addition of um, base or alkali now. So obviously bases, alkalis will react 
with H plus ions and therefore lower the concentration of the H plus and the equilibrium will want to um, restore the, the equilibrium and so it will move this way We've got this large reservoir of weak acid which can dissociate a bit more and put those H plus ions back and so the addition of base will shift the equilibrium to the right. We'll finish with some everyday examples of buffers now. So the first example we'll talk about uh, are found in skin or hair products. So your skin has um, a, a natural pH of 5.5. So it's important that these products are buffered to match the pH of your skin. You also find buffers in a lot of baby products, so creams and lotions used for babies. It's very, very important that the pH of these solutions matches that of the skin so it doesn't cause any damage. There's also a very, very important buffer system in your blood. Now, it's very important that blood pH doesn't um, fall below this level of 7.35 or go above this level of 7.45. So there's a very tight range of pH that blood can be at, otherwise you're in trouble. If your blood does fall below this 7.35 limit, that's known as acidosis. And if your blood pH goes above 7.45, that's known as alkalosis. So what are the chemicals that make up the buffer system in your blood? Well, the system's made up from the carbonic acid hydrogen carbonate buffer. And we'll write the equilibrium on the board. So carbonic acid is H2CO3. And that exists in equilibrium with the hydrogen carbonate ion. So essentially this is a weak acid. It's going to dissociate partially into the HCO3 minus ion. And what we're left with. H plus. So again we've got a weak acid and we've got the salt of a weak acid which is also remember the conjugate base. It works in exactly the same way as the buffer that you saw previously. So if your blood becomes more acidic, in other words the H plus concentration increases then the reservoir of conjugate base the HCO3 minus ion will react with the extra H plus ions and obviously the equilibrium will shift this way and maintain the pH between these levels. If your blood becomes too alkaline in other words the H plus concentration drops then you've got a large reservoir of the carbonic acid which can then dissociate more i.e. move this way and replace those H plus ions that have been taken out. So exactly the same mechanism as you've already seen. Now most materials that are released into the blood are acidic so we'll look at this in a little bit more detail. So here here's the buffer system in your blood so we're saying that most things going into the blood are going to increase the H plus concentration. So what will the equilibrium do? It will shift to the left. Now that's obviously going to increase the levels of um, carbonic acid in your blood. And if that went unchecked, that would cause problems. So we'll have a look at the next step after that. So the next thing to happen is an enzyme converts this extra carbonic acid into essentially aqueous carbon dioxide. The aqueous carbon dioxide is then transported to your lungs where the aqueous carbon dioxide is converted into gaseous carbon dioxide and then obviously you would then breathe that out.